I think guys, how would you be? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, what we're looking at today is just the Mosley tri-beam. Uh, it was a TA32 sitting on top of a Clark pneumatic mast. I think all told, I think the mast is around about, it's about 9 or 10 metres tall. Uh, and I believe it's something like a seven section. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With the exception that the last section, uh, right up top, just there, uh, below the rotator, doesn't come up. Uh, now I've had a chat to Clark about that, and uh, they seem to suggest that it's, it may have been bent. This was a second hand mast. Uh, normally these go for, uh, you know, thousand bucks, couple of thousand bucks, ri ridiculous sort of dollars, uh, even second in the second hand market. Um, but I managed to pick this one up for 200 bucks. Uh, the guy that had it listed uh, quite a while ago when I originally got it had it listed as just a telescope, uh, sorry, a photo mask uh, for photography. And you can see that there. Uh, now it is fairly heavy, it weighs about 30 odd kilo. Uh, so it is fairly heavy as far as you know, shifting it and moving it around, but obviously you don't move it around while it's extended, you drop it down. And there's the G450 Yaesu rotator on top of that. So this is the bottom of the mast itself. It's about, uh, I think they say it's 4 inches, so it's about 110 mil uh, in diameter. So she, you can see she's had a bit of a rough life, but she's been well used. Um, no real issues other than, like I said, that top section uh, that doesn't pop up but that's really not too much of an issue especially when I've got a rotator on top I'm happy for that section to remain in so I've got no problems with that and you'll see it was made in 88 so it's at about uh, 30 years old basically uh, and it's a PT9 now they I don't believe they make these units in anymore they do make variations uh, of but uh, not these Clark mast down the bottom. Uh, I think they're your quarter inch connections, so they're just your normal compressor connections. Uh, this, if anybody can advise, um, I have been told that it's a pressure switch, so it's a cutoff. Uh, but how that works exactly, I'm not entirely sure. And you can see the condition of that is um, pretty much rat shit. Because I, I am going to eventually mount this on the back of the car. So this is going to sit on a hitch, a trailer hitch, which I've, I've partly screwed, uh, sorry, partly drilled holes in. There are four holes in the bottom here, so there'll be four holes. And it come up here, and you'll see these things that I've got here. Uh, so these will go uh, pretty much sit on top of each other at the top of the mast here. I don't have any of the original mounting bracketry for um, <laughs> mounting anywhere, basically, whether it be mounting on a car or otherwise. Um, so these are going to be makeshift and Pretty much, just, like I said, she'll be bolted down the bottom uh, onto a tow hitch. That'll go into the hitch at the back of the car, a two-inch receiver. Uh, and then these will sit somewhere as high as I can. Um, and then I'm going to have some aluminium strap going from here, uh, either side, and going up to the roof rack of the car for, for uh, stabilising it. And then there'll be, obviously be some guying and stuff as well. Uh, but you'll see, I've literally just got this scrap strapped to... Uh, an old clothesline at the back. I do have a second clothesline over there. Uh, but this one is solid in the ground. So uh, it was done quite a while ago by the look of it. She's been around for a while. And uh, she's, you know, solid enough to, to mount that. Um, I have got some very light guying on it. Not sure if you can see that. Um, coming down there. Just going to a, a large sand peg, and the other one, the other one just goes to a, a Y stake over here. I do have a preference for the Y stakes, but I ran out. So when I did get this, uh, I didn't have any of the connections in the bottom, uh, so I basically just grabbed these uh, and put them in. Uh, it took a bit of an effort because I had to put an extension on, because uh, you can see there is some room underneath, uh, and we are leaking air there. Okay. I can hear that air coming out there. I have noticed that she's been dropping, so I did know I was losing air somewhere. You know, I didn't, however, realise that it was down here, so... 
Maybe if I tighten that up, uh, that might resolve my leaking issue. But uh, you can hear that there. This actual connection here itself. So that's hopefully good news. Just your normal compressor airline um, going in there. So that's just so. And then on this side, uh, I basically put on the valve. Uh, so at any time I can release the air out of that and drop it back down. On that for the uh, car compressor. So when I go out and I use this remotely and I mount it on the back of the car, I can actually plug that in. Although I do have the ability to use these type of connections on that. So we'll have a look at that. What I need to figure out though is a way to um, have the compressor on uh, but have it automatically cut off. So I've been looking for some pressure switches unless I can get this one sorted out and get the one that's already in it to work, whether it's functional or not, I don't know. Um, but if I can get a pressure switch, 12 volt pressure switch, so it doesn't really matter too much about the voltage, if it's only going to be 12 volt, uh, to do a cutoff once that hits pressure. Problem is I can find those, but they normally start around about 50 psi. Um, uh, but most of them are around the 90 to 120 psi. But these guys generally, as a rule, uh, will run somewhere between 11 and 20 psi. Uh, I think 11 is generally about where they're comfortable. And obviously you only need enough pressure in there to uh, to get the thing to go up. You, you don't want to continue to, to pump additional pressure into it. Otherwise, you're simply going to blow all the uh, all the seals and stuff like that. So you can see the seals for when they come down and close up. Not real sure what all of these screws are. Uh, whether I can dismantle this myself and and uh, I guess give it a clean up, give it a service. I'm not sure what type of seals are inside. So you'll see we've got a channel that runs down here. Uh, and it is a section that comes out of the actual exterior of the mast and, and sits in that section. Uh, so she locks in so she won't rotate uh, or, or turn. The upper sections aren't going to rotate. So if I do have this in a specific direction uh, like I do now, she's not going to, you know, the internal sections aren't going to rotate and bugger up our direction. So I can put it, fix it up, uh, fix it in a specific direction. Uh, and I know it's going to stay that way and it's only going to be the rotator that's actually going to do the turning. So it is very, very strong. Uh, it's very, very solid. So guying is not too much of an issue, but it obviously does provide some reassurance. There's the mast there. And if we come up here, um, I'm pretty close to this loop. Uh, so I need to make sure I have it uh, north, northeast, um, or south, southwest. Um, so the boom is in its shortest position, and I can actually get this up and down. So what I have noticed is that having that antenna at height makes all the difference. Uh, it, it was okay down at sort of the 10 feet, whatever I had for tuning. Uh, the tuning appears to have remained the same, uh, if not gotten better at height, as you usually find out anyway when you raise the antennas. But what I've definitely found is that the, the improvement, you know, uh, once you get it up at height, uh, is is considerable uh, compared to what you'll get when you've got it sitting on the ground. Having it on the ground, and it would look, it was exactly the same as the hex beam that I had, and that was why I got rid of the hex beam, uh, was because uh, I, I only had it on that 
small mast, the, the sort of 12 foot mast. Uh, I've got the, the tin roof on the shed here. I've got the loop that goes around and then I had the uh, end fed that was going directly over top of it and it just did not like that at all. Um, so in retrospect, I probably could have just kept the hex beam and put it up. But to be honest, I, I like the, uh, I guess, traditional look uh, of, of the beam that you've got up there, of the Mosley, compared to the hex beam. Uh, I, it is, I think it has a slightly larger turning radius, uh, but overall, uh, you know, from a area covered, I mean, a hex beam, you know, is very central, but it's, it's a lot more obvious, I think, uh, than this. Uh, in consideration this I, I think for uh, non amateur radio operators you know neighbors and the like I think uh, the Mosley sort of a you know, two element beam is a lot less offensive and in, in your face so whilst I was able to I had hoisted um, uh, up onto the roof not this roof but a roof of similar height etc I had managed to hoist uh, a hex beam up onto a roof uh, like that one it was actually a tin roof though with slightly less gradient to it uh, but I had managed to get a hex beam up onto a roof and onto that mast there that you'll see. So it was, uh, wasn't was quite at that height, obviously, when I put the hex beam up, but was able to get the hex beam up onto the roof using a ladder on my own, uh, mounted and then get it pushed up on a mast. Uh, I think this is, I think this, the Mosley is probably weighs less, don't quote me, I think it's around about six kilos. Uh, but it's, whilst, you know, weights are probably comparable, uh, this is so much easier to handle. I was providing you aware of your lengths uh, of the of the booms themselves. Uh, it's easier to handle. The hex beam is light, but it is a little bit unwieldy, so which makes it difficult because you're basically standing in the antenna, in amongst all the wires, whilst you're holding onto the mast and uh, you know trying to move around. So that's it, guys. Any questions, comments, whatever, uh, feel free to make them, pass them on. Uh, if you've got any information around that pressure gauge, certainly let me know if you know how it's meant to be wired up. Uh, I suppose I can get in contact with uh, Clark and talk to them about that. But, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, one thing I just wanted to touch on is I did shoot a quick email to Mosley when I was doing the setup, and I'd like to report back that they got back in touch with me within one day uh, and sent me a copy of the instructions. So uh, I appreciate that. I did let them know that these videos were going to be up. I know they like customer feedback and uh, customer pictures, etc. Um, of their antennas, so I told them they're welcome to use the video uh, as they so choose. So whether they'll do that or not, uh, entirely up to them. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So good news is to report that uh, Mosley are responsive to inquiries, uh, even though I did inform them that it was actually uh, a second-hand unit, albeit uh, basically brand new in the box. There you go. Thanks, guys.